Hello, and welcome everyone. This is Sabrina Paganoni. I'm here from the Healy Center with Dr. Sukovic and our patient navigation team, Alison and Catherine. Welcome everyone. We're giving uh, people a few seconds to join um, from the waiting room. So thank you for being with us for our weekly updates. So we are very excited to continue to be with you on a weekly basis um, to provide you with updates about the Healy ALS platform trial uh, and also to answer any questions that you may have about ALS research and about the trial in particular. So if you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box at any time and we'll take them um, as soon as we're done with this very short presentation. Next slide. And uh, as you know, for, for, for those of you who joined us, um, have been joining us for, for, for the past year, uh, we are uh, very excited to test multiple drugs in this innovative trial. Um, and more recently, we, um, we, we are at five drugs uh, and, and we uh, are um, continuing to add new drugs in the next few months. So right now we are testing the Leucoplan, Verdiperstat, CNMAU8, Predopidin, and Trialos. Uh, we are going to have results for the first four uh, regimens of the trial, the first four drugs over the next few weeks. And uh, at this time, we are enrolling new participants. Uh, so there's definitely spots available for people who want to participate in the trial of in the regimen of trialos, which is regimen E in the platform trial. And then we're also working hard on adding new drugs to this platform over the next few weeks. Next, uh, next slide. So uh, as I said earlier, uh, we are enrolling new participants uh, at this time specifically for Regimen E. Uh, and uh, 74 people have been randomized within Regimen E at this time. Uh, for those of you who are new, there is a sort of a, um, a two-step process to get into the trial. So you have first to, participants first need to um, get in for a screening visit and sign informed consent. So we have over 100 people who have started the process. And then uh, for those who are eligible, then they can continue to proceed. So uh, really excited to have now over 100 people who have uh, kind of uh, developed an interest in this in this regimen. And obviously, we still have more spots because we, um, we uh, are planning on uh, randomizing about 160 people within this regimen. And the size of, of each regimen is roughly the same for the first few regimens. So uh, thank you so much for all your work and all your participation uh, and really uh, your continued participation and support really keeps us going and, and uh, allowing us to test uh, more drugs. Next slide. So right now we are enrolling for Regimen E at 46 sites, uh, and we're very happy to continue to add sites every week. Uh, so the, uh, the list of sites is on the right, uh, and the ones that are a little bit bigger, the, the five new names on the right um, in, in bigger font are the sites that were added more recently. So again, every week we continue to activate more sites. If you have questions about which sites are available, uh, are near you, you can take a look at the link and the QR code that's listed on the slide. You can also take a look at the map that you can see um, on the slide here. Next slide. And with any questions, even outside this trial, or if you cannot find the answer on the website, please don't hesitate to contact Catherine and Alison who are on the call with us. Uh, they're also available by phone and email. Uh, and the QR codes that they prepared are for people to continue to register for the weekly webinars. We will continue to have this, this series. Um, and also, if you want to receive our newsletter uh, uh, called ALS Link, please sign up for it. We always love to have uh, guest speakers, uh, and especially it's a lot of fun for us to get to know our site PIs. So we have Dr. Uh, Amanda Peltier from Vanderbilt join us um, next week. Uh, and then uh, the following week, uh, we will have Hani Kuslav uh, from uh, Cincinnati join us. So really great to, um, to see um, you know, to, to learn about their sites. And then September 1st, we're gonna have uh, our um, uh, close colleague and, and collaborator, Dr. James Berry from the Healy Center. He will um, be back. He's been um, a great speaker on, on this webinar series a few times, talking about biomarkers specifically, and, and he will be back on September 1st. And I think that this was the last slide. Uh, so again, today we have short updates, but as always, we want to take um, to use most of the time for your questions. And so uh, I'll be taking your questions so uh, we can stop sharing slides and, and begin taking your questions. Let me see, Dr. Sukovic, I have a few questions for you. Uh, and and that's, um, 
let's see, a uh, few questions about timelines. Can you tell us more about the timelines for uh, closing out the first four groups for regiments uh, and then the timeline for announcing results? Um, first of all, uh, nice to see everybody again. I've been gone for a couple of these, uh, so I've missed them. Um, so for the first three regimens, A, B, and C, um, database lock has has happened. I don't have a timeline when we're going to have the results, um, but I do uh, commit to, uh, we always commit to people that as soon as we have them, and uh, we, we we do have to by law put out a press release at first uh, because the the companies we're working with are um, um, uh, commercial companies, so they have SEC laws that they have to follow. But we finally put out a press release, then we notify the same day all the sites and all the participants in the trial, and then we uh, schedule a webinar to tell everybody. So there'll be a whole series of communication once they come out, as soon as we uh, can possibly uh, find out ourselves and, and get the word out. Uh, Regimen D is um, the last person has finished the double blind part of it, and we are still in data cleaning for that. Um, and then Regimen E, as you heard, is almost halfway uh, enrolled. Uh, so I'm um, very excited about that. The science for Three Hellos is really pretty phenomenal. And I know we, we did one of our webinars here about that, and we have a video on it. Um, it's a drug that um, it kind of disrupts the, the uh, protein aggregates, uh, the TDP43 containing protein aggregates that we know are present in almost everybody with ALS, and also uh, triggers uh, part of the cell called the lysosome that gets rid of mismade proteins. So the biology is very strong. And um, so we're excited about that, but we, we want to finish enrolling as soon as we can so that we can find the results of that trial as, as fast as possible. So thank you for those of you who are and, and also those of you who are helping get the word out to people. Uh, now that we have 46 sites activated, uh, I'm hoping enrollment will uh, go even faster. Great. Uh, and more questions about timelines. So um, as, as, as you know from previous webinars, we have uh, futility uh, evaluations done at regular intervals. And so the question is whether this process has started for Regimen E, uh, and if not, you know, kind of, if you can tell us more about the timelines for that. Yeah, so the, um, so once the platform itself started, so for Regimens A and C, um, the futility analyses pretty much started and they just keep happening every quarter or so. And once a drug a regimen has enough data that it makes sense to start to do a futility look, they will start. Um, and uh, so they have not started yet uh, for regimen E because we, uh, we don't have enough people in the follow up for them to be useful. Um, uh, but, but obviously they will start. Um, and I, I'll just say that I've, in every trial, I think in the last decade that I've been, uh, have a hand in designing and put in futility stopping rules. It's really important that um, if, if it really looks like a drug isn't going to work, that we abort early. But you have to be, um, you have to build these pretty conservative at the beginning because you also don't want to stop a drug early that might actually be efficacious. So some of the first looks at this are pretty conservative, like we wouldn't stop unless it was causing harm at the early looks. I, I see here a, a great comment. Thank you for sharing it uh, about um, one of our sites participating in Regiment E. One participant is commenting uh, that they're having a great experience at Georgetown. So thank you for that. Thank you for writing. Um, uh, another question about timelines. There's a question about when the next few regiments uh, will start. Yeah, I, 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 I don't have exact timelines on that. I would think maybe end of the year or early uh, Q1 of 2023. So when we start to work with a company and we just recently announced that we're working with Calico, um, uh, we, we go to design phase. So we have to design their regimen and what's specific to their drug. And then depending on the, the drug, we might, may or may not have a meeting with the FDA and what happens, then we then we go and amend um, the protocol and, and uh, have all that efficiency so we can start. So we're uh, we're in the design phase for that. And we are talking to three other companies. Um, and uh, so I, I do, I'm pretty confident that in 20, early 2023, we'll, we'll have several uh, re, uh, new regimens enrolling, which is exactly what we wanted with the platform trial, which is efficiency of, of um, 
uh, bringing the best treatments forward uh, in an efficient way. Yeah, there's a, there's a great question about combining drugs. And so now that we have multiple drugs, so the question is, uh, as, as any of the companies uh, decided to work in coordination with others to research combination of different drugs in animal models? I think, um, you know, all the, uh, a, lot of, a lot of companies and a lot of investigators combine the new drug with the uh, marketed drugs. So, for example, Rilazol and Radicava, um, and, you know, in the future, depending on the FDA decision on the Amlex drug, that will be another one. And in fact, in the platform trial, we are testing, in a way, a combination of the new drug with Rilazol, uh, because those are both allowed. Um, my... I don't know if any of the companies we're working with have then tested their drug with another drug in the platform. I suspect that that will happen afterwards. Like if um, you know the drug is positive, let's say two of them are positive, that then they would we would want them to test it together as well as with Rilazol and Radicava. Um, but I think that's likely to happen after the known results. Right. There's actually a question, maybe you could clarify that about results. Uh, somebody's asking if you can share any information on what the first look at the data is for the first three regimens. So maybe you clarify. I don't have any data. No, I'm, I'm still blinded. I have not seen any results. Um, no one has seen any results. Um, but again, when, once we do have them, um, there'll be a press release and then, and then a webinar that we'll do. We're going to do first for the participants that same day. And then as soon as we can, you know, uh, for everybody. Yeah. There's a question about, um, you know, joining the open label extension. So as a reminder for everyone, there is a first period uh, that's placebo controlled six months and then an open label extension. Can people go from, if, if they participated in one regimen, can they then move to a different uh, open label extension? A good question. Um, no, they cannot. And the reason is um, that um, there's a couple of reasons. So one is the open web label extension is a really important part of the study. We really saw that in the Amalek study that Sabrina led, that the information learned in the double blind period was really important, but also the, the information learned in the open label extension was super important. And it might be that that having both sets of data is what may, might allow us to have approval of a drug on, on really one study. So, um, it's, it's a great thing to do and we want to provide open label extension to people, but it's also a really great thing for drug development and a way to, to um, accelerate getting the drug to market for everybody. Yeah. Um, so for that reason, we need to keep the open label uh, extension just for the drug for that regimen and the people in that regimen. Yeah, there's a question. Uh, there's a couple of questions about um, sort of uh, topics that are not directly related to the platform trial. But uh, one question is about Prime C, which which is uh, a drug in development that has um, a different trial. So, can you update us on on uh, Prime C and and the trials that they're doing? Yeah, this is um, a, a company um, called Neurosense, and they have um, they have a combination treatment that works on something called um, uh, R, uh, DICER, or it's, it's part of how your uh, RNA or part of your gene uh, machinery makes proteins. And uh, this drug kind of fixes some problems in what we call RNA metabolism in models of ALS. Uh, they did a, a small open label study in Israel. Uh, open label means no placebo to kind of look at safety and some biomarker work. And they did some of the biomarker work with Sabrina. And now they're doing a phase two study called Paradigm, which is right now only open in Israel, uh, where they're enrolling more people, I think about 70, um, and looking again at, at signals of efficacy as well as biomarker work and looking at different at a, at a dose. Um, so, so that's ongoing, but at, at the moment only available, uh, the trial's only available in Israel. Yeah. There's a question about um, a different mechanism, um, considering the role of T cells in disease progression, is there any plan to study immunomodulators in the trial? Yeah, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of science around um, T cells immune, and the immune system in ALS, and there's many, many trials uh, of different approaches for that. And this is, a lot of this work is from Stan Pell that shows that as the illness progresses that the T regulatory cells, which usually block inflammation, um, are dysfunctional 
and that uh, different approaches to kind of make those T regulatory cells function better, um, at least in, in lab models might be helpful. Um, so there's a few, there's at least four or five companies that have different ways to um, kind of stabilize and improve your T regulatory cell function. And um, they're in kind of early phase development. So just two, for example, are um, the RAPA, R-A-P-A, they're in a phase one trial uh, with their approach. And then in, um, Implicit is a company that we've been working with uh, that's doing a uh, small um, uh, compassion use study to look at uh, dose and safety. Great. There's another comment from another uh, participant in Regimen E wants to thank uh, the site. They're working at the University of Minnesota. So thank you so much uh, for, um, you know, sending us, you know, um, positive, positive note about this site. We really love working with them. Um, thank you for that. There's also another uh, very nice note about uh, the importance of webinars for participants and somebody's um, sharing an experience with a different trial where uh, essentially there was no communication of results to the participants. So maybe if you want to comment on, on kind of, again, our approach in really trying to get, um, you know, all the inf information to the participants right away. Yeah, so yes, we always, it's so important. I'm sorry that if that happened to someone in a different study. Um, so. Um, so our plan, and, and we are a little restricted by against um, SEC rules, but our, our approach is that you know, the morning that the results are, are shared by a public release, which has to happen first uh, by the company, that we, um, we schedule a webinar immediately for all the sites, like all, your, all the physicians and the nurses at the site, so we can explain it to them because they haven't seen it, so that they can answer questions from their participants, but also on the same day, uh, and we have the same day and then also another one the next day so we can reach everyone. We have a webinar for the participants. And uh, it, sometimes it's hard because we have no notice, right? So, um, and the sites have no notice to contact the participants. That's why we try to do it you know, later in the day, that first day and the next day. And then later in the week, we'll have a, um, a more you know, open webinar for everybody. Uh, that, that's our current plan. Great. Actually, there's a good question about access to drugs. So let's the question is, let's say that one of the drugs in the platform trial has positive results and it works. When will that drug be available to people with ALS? Yeah, it's a really good question. And it, it's probably not a one answer fits all. I, and uh, I don't want not to sound like the FDA, but they would say it depends on the data, depends on how robust it is. I think if it's a, you know, a home run, really a robust finding that there would be a discussion right away with the FDA about whether it was sufficient for filing. Um, and then um, we would be strongly encouraging the companies to uh, provide expanded access while they work while they work on the filing. The fastest approval that I know neurology from when the company filed with the FDA to when the drug was on the market was nine months. So during that time, often the companies will provide the drug on compassionate use basis. Um, and sometimes those timelines are getting shorter, but that would be the, the best situation. Yeah. And actually, I'm glad to report that we're working on inviting a guest uh, on this webinar series to really explain um, this is a person with ALS uh, who um, worked uh, in, in the pharmaceutical industry and has experience with drug approvals. And so um, this person will help us really understand all the steps so that there's a clear understanding in the community about what's needed for an NDA and what the timelines are or what the process looks like. Uh, for every slide that we share in this webinar series, we need uh, for them to be um, approved by the IRB. Uh, and so again, we're working on all of that. And again, we, we plan on, on uh, providing you with all this information so that there's also um, a common understanding of the process uh, over the next few weeks. Yeah, I, I look forward to that. And, you know, it's, it's, we finally at the point where we, we really need everybody to understand this because um, there's two drugs under FDA review right now for ALS, um, the Amlex drug and the Tefersen and then suddenly have the oral radicava. We're in a new time where we're going to see hopefully more and more of these new drug applications. So to, to have um, some information out there about the process um, is, is helpful for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and on, on that note, there's a couple of questions about AMX35. So the first question is, if, if the drug is approved, if somebody is already in regimen E, 
uh, when would they be able to take it? Maybe when they go to open label extension or, or what's the process for that? Yeah, it's a really good question. We'll also have a, probably a webinar on that. Um, we're going to probably ask people if they could wait open label. And the reason for that is if, if, if people do start it in the middle of it, it makes it very hard to tell if regimen E drug works or not. However, um, we'll, we'll do our best to, to um, make that work for people. Um, for example, the oral radicava just came out and we, we are allowing people in regimen E who were, who were not in, on the IV version to start that mid-trial. And uh, though we've asked people if you're almost done with a double blind, maybe you could wait a month or, or so if, if possible. And the statistics around that of how to make still tell if the new drug works or not are complex. So we've um, we've worked out what we think are a good way to deal with that um, those statistics, and we're um, submitting that to the FDA for their feedback on that. Anything we learn from that can be applied to how to handle this, also for the the Amelix. So I, I do think that's another good webinar to discuss about like what. What are the challenges to doing that? I mean, and both, you know, statistically as well as just, you know, uh, we want to do the right thing for people. So how do you how to balance that? Yeah, about AMX thirty five. The other question is uh, asking for your thoughts about the cost benefit analysis uh, of the drug that was published recently by ICER. So, so in general, do you have any thoughts about sort of cost benefit analysis for ALS drugs? <laughs> Well, I think um, it's it's hard to, to do that without when you don't know what the price is. So <laughs> they've done it without knowing the price. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how they did that. I mean, I think for an illness like ALS, that we um, that um, any drug that slows down the illness should be made available to our participants um, and be able to recoup their cost for that of developing the drug. Otherwise, no one's going to develop a drug. So um, I, I don't agree with some of the conclusions they came down uh, with. Um, and I think I know a lot of the people I care for uh, also don't agree with some of their assumptions of what, what's valuable to people living with this illness with, in terms of drugs that can slow down uh, the progression. Yeah, definitely. So uh, there's a question again about the new regimens. I think you you mentioned before, maybe if you can repeat, uh, when do we uh, think that the new Calico AV regimen will start? Yeah, I don't. I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm hoping that you know, end of the year, or early 2023, uh, we we um, we are working on the design, and and we need to get some FDA feedback. Um, so, uh, but we're doing our best to move as fast as we can. Yeah, actually, the people really love webinars, and so we have another comment uh, comment here about the the webinars with participants. So, would we plan on doing that if if a regimen showed futility? Yes. Yeah. And we did do that for regimen. Yeah. 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 No, of course. Yes. Yes. It's important. Yeah. Um, uh, no matter what the result is, is to, to show. I think these were all the questions. We took all the questions, I think, that, that were sent. So thank you so much for sending great questions, as always. And Dr. Sukovic, any uh, final thoughts for tonight? Well, I was just going to thank you all for coming again and also for the people in Regimen E. It's uh, The other new thing for us in Regimen E is since it is a weekly uh, uh, intravenous infusion of um, using a home uh, infusion uh, um, a service that with nurses who can deliver, who are trained to deliver experimental medications in the hood, I'd say it's 90% gone really well. There's been, you know, little hiccups, um, but um, there is a, a major nursing shortage in the country, but it's, it's been pretty phenomenal. So uh, I, I um, well, I hope we have oral drugs. Uh, if, if we do have IV drugs and that's how you have to do it, I think we've come up with a good approach to be able to do it in people's homes. Great. Thank you so much. And, and we'll see everyone again next week. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.